me just explain um, to everybody watching, Radovan is in Melbourne at the Melbourne International Brass Festival and yesterday he gave a masterclass which was live streamed and I woke up very early in the morning to watch it and he accompanied me. You were playing while I was eating my, mu my muesli. <laughs> and, oh, what a noise. Um, Radovan, tell me, you do so many masterclasses around the world. I mean, you're, you're, you're everywhere. You play solo concerts everywhere, but your masterclasses, do you find, I was watching yesterday, do you find that people always ask the same things? Um, I do encourage the colleagues, the young horn players, to ask me questions, but actually uh, there was very limited time yesterday. We only had about 90 minutes for four young colleagues, and they played marvelously, and um, it was just, uh, we, we spoke to them before the masterclass, how we should go about it. So we decided that they should do some playing, but there's only very little time to uh, maybe comment generally on the pieces, to give an introduction to the, the repertoire, and then to maybe just give a suggestion or two. It's more of a musical encounter, and we didn't have very much time to go into depth. But if the questions come, then it's interesting to, to maybe concentrate on one point per person and talk about that in general, because uh, to, to work on someone's playing and details, we would just I find sometimes when I'm doing a master class, I go out a little bit frustrated because you want to help so much and you want to give everything, but there's such a short amount of time. And do you feel like people people go out and uh, sometimes I'm worried that they take what I've said and then they they think that's like the law, but it's not. You know, there's so many different opinions out there, and I'm sure you agree with me. It's up to the student to take what he wants, he or she wants, and yeah, pick yeah. out. Um, I think it's important to talk about your uh, first and immediate impression, that's for sure. And on the other hand, the situation of a masterclass is uh, somewhat delicate, because on the one hand you have to concentrate on the particular person's playing and their music making, on the other hand you have to sort of entertain your audience there. Uh, now, and this online. Yes, and, and online. <laughs> I wasn't actually aware of that. Maybe better, but uh, I think it's 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 uh, important to make maybe some general points which are interesting to most of the, the people. Hopefully, what what are your what are your most sorry if I interrupt? Um, no. What are your most interesting? What are your most main points? What do you find you bring in really every master class? What do the people want to know the most? I mean, from you, I know it, for me it's always low notes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I don't know if there's there's one one question or one topic which comes up more frequently than others. For instance, we have a lovely hall here, the town hall in South Melbourne, a beautiful place where I understand that the Melbourne Symphony is to make a lot of recordings. It has a gorgeous, generous acoustic. And for instance, one thing I noticed that the, the choice of tempo and the articulation was an issue here because it's such a big space that you have to really take. Uh, um, attention to every detail of playing. And that's something that maybe uh, needs to be talked about a little bit because we spend a lot of time in practice room. You have a very nice, generous, big practice room behind you, but that's not always the case when you're a younger player. So just the possibility to play in a bigger space and, and know how to relate with it. And there I just mention our experiences, you know, from theater, from actors, from opera singers, who do you know, know how to use that space and sometimes Sometimes you know exaggerate. Sometimes uh, just just uh, do less. It's like acting in front of a camera and acting for the theatre. So you have to know what you're doing in time and space. Well, that would be the one thing that you would advise people to really use the space because they come out of small practice rooms a lot of the time. I totally agree with you. And what would you say for people that are? Because I have people a little bit. They come in and they're they're nervous. You know, I'm the one that's usually nervous for them, but. But they come in and they're quite, they're quite on edge. And, and, and how can people combat that the best? Because I, we hear it all the time. We all struggle with it. You know, people think just because we're grown-ups and soloists and orchestral players, we don't struggle with it. But I know, I mean, I, well, I'm speaking for myself. I, I certainly do. Um, but what would you advise the students before coming into a master class? How can they combat this nervousness? It's a very good question, and I think we could talk about that. I know, that's why I asked you. <laughs> hours on end. Uh, I just came from Scandinavia, and my wife, Dinka, was there with me. We were giving a master class together at the Hochschule in Malmö. In Sweden, close to Copenhagen, and we had wonderful students both from Copenhagen and Malmö, as well as Gothenburg. 
And my wife gave a lecture, an introductory lecture, on uh, several different uh, mental techniques which can be used in order to cope with the, the situation of, of being nervous before, or during, or after a performance. And there she mentioned a number of different things which you can do. She mentioned the fact that you have to practice this preparation on a regular basis and not ex expect miraculous results when you know about something and want to apply it for the first time just before the concert. So whether it is yoga, whether it's Alexander Technique, whether it's Feldenkrais, uh, whether it's uh, Pilates, if you like, whether it's stretching, any kind of, uh, um, I think, mental and, and psychological technique which can help you is something that needs to constantly be done. So I think uh, it's, it's interesting to explore, to find out what, what suits you best, and then to learn that without the instrument first. You know? If you learn, I don't know, uh, relaxation, uh, uh, you just learn how to uh, gradually um, relax muscle uh, groups along your body, and then therefore become, become a little bit calm. But the yeah. first most uh, important step is just to acknowledge that there is this uh, nervousness and not to fight against it, but, but to use it to our um, advantage. And by that, oh. by that, I mean first not to try and eliminate it completely. And that means that you just uh, get more uh, accustomed to the situation, even if it doesn't feel comfortable in the beginning. And then then to understand that this can actually enhance your performance. If a little bit of nervousness doesn't disturb it, it makes it you know, more special, more, more nervous, more energetic. And I think that's the first step. But it's a long story, so it's, it's uh, too long to say. Maybe, maybe, maybe I can get your wife back on here someday and we can talk about yes, it in detail. That would be, that would be really nice. good. I would be very interested in knowing about this. Mm -hmm. That's, that would be really great. There seem to be almost two types of horn players. The ones that sort of go like this, you know, and are really, you don't need, seem to suffer at all, and the others which seem to die a thousand deaths. There seems to be rarely something in between. <laughs> That's what yeah, I think we all we all get excited and, and nervous about a performance. We just listen to a lovely jazz concert, and it is so liberating, you know, uh, to hear how how directly they make music. It's, it's inspiring to hear. So that's also another source of inspiration to hear how freely they mean because they improvise. Uh, they're not um, playing from sheet music, you know, as we do. And uh, it's wonderful to hear. I love jazz, although I can't play it myself, but I love to listen to it, and uh, it's another source of inspiration. I think, I think all horn players would benefit from learning jazz. I'm speaking as a total nerd. I, I couldn't improvise to save my life. I wish I could, but I think all horn players should learn it, because it would really loosen everybody up. Yes. Yeah. Radovan, I have a great note after you. No, no, no. It's just wonderful to also have the experience of being to, able to improvise even a little bit when you're outdoors, let's say, in the woods or, or playing even an out corner. So it's just fun to do that and, and know your own sound, know your own voice, be connected with nature and everything. So I think that's a nice, good, good feeling uh, to, to feel good with your own instrument and feel it as if it were an extension of your own body. All right, Ivan, two horn nerd questions. I'm sorry, but you know what? The, we all want to know the same thing. Two, two, two questions that have appeared quite a lot because people are chatting online, and I'll have to go back and look at it now because I haven't worked out how to look at both. Sorry, guys. We'll work this one out, I promise, and I'll be back online very soon, and we will, we will answer all these questions that you're chatting. Um, but, Matt Radovan, what mouthpiece do you use? <laughs> No, I have a, a Bruno Tilt's mouthpiece. Uh, but the story is funny because uh, I only had a day's time to go from Berlin to close to Nuremberg, where, where Tilt's uh, workshop is, and we didn't have time to actually, uh, what's it called, uh, silver plate it. So it stayed there in pure brass, which is probably not a very good and healthy thing to, to play on and chew on, on for many years. Um, I, when I was a student, I used a French mouthpiece. It was a Selmer mouthpiece. You don't see those around anymore. And I played, indeed, a Selmer piston valve instrument when I was a student. So when I came to Germany, it was time to uh, also look into the possibility of using a different instrument. So I chose the Paxman horn and my old French uh, uh, mouthpiece didn't fit into the instrument, it was too wide. So I, I had a copy of this uh, French uh, mouthpiece made first, except that the inner limb was not uh, very sharp, it was rather uh, soft 
and roundish, which made legato playing easy. And then after that, we sharpened that, and I think my attack um, uh, got a little bit better also, important thing in the orchestra. But to answer your question directly, it's not a model which which uh, is um, any standard model. So I just have copies made of it, and maybe someday we'll just... It's, it, it Everybody has... wants to know. Everybody wanted to know. They want to know what mouthpiece you play. And I also play on a strange mixture of mouthpieces. Yes. That it's it's not a standard mouthpiece. Uh, it's no secret, but I don't recommend it widely because it's not particularly easy to play. I like the sound of it, but it's not easy to play in the high range, for instance, and uh, that's why I don't necessarily uh, recommend it to my students. But uh, I do have a couple, few copies made so from time to time. I, I show it. Yeah. Okay, and the other question that people want to know about is how do you keep in shape on tour when you're on the road all the time in hotel rooms, you know, and, and hanging out and at airports and changing planes all the time? How do you keep in shape? Yeah, that's a very good question. I think I haven't found the answer yet. But here in Melbourne, for instance, we have the opportunity to do warm ups together. So there's quite a number of young horn players here, and we spend the first hour and a quarter or so together. I show them some of the exercises which I do on a daily basis. And uh, since we play alternately and don't play all the time, it's, you don't get quite so tired uh, during this first hour. And I think that's a nice way to begin the day. Sometimes yeah. you won't have an hour or an hour and a half to do all of these exercises. You can do a short program. You can just do a sort of a comprimiate uh, fasten, a short. <laughs> How do you feel about hotel rooms? It's such a pain to practice in hotel rooms, don't you think? Yes, I, I don't feel comfortable practicing do in hotel rooms. Do you use a silent so, brass? Yeah. Uh, no, I did, did try that, but I don't much uh, actually practice with units. So I try to go to the venue, and um, usually I'm quite lucky if I announce that I'd like to practice. So the, the truth is that actually I have more time to practice on tour than I than I do when I'm at home or when I'm <laughs> teaching. So actually, it, it's easier to stay in shape on tour for me, at least. So you're teaching in Salzburg. You're teaching in Madrid. Uh, do you have any other professorships, or is the others to your main? You're at the academy. Which is? Yes. No. I also do teach in, in Zurich at the Hochschule uh, um, der Künste in Zurich, and I'm a guest professor at the Royal Academy in London. So I, I spend a few days every term there. In I remember our Konzertstück. We had a great time in London last year. That was so much fun. Honestly, I, your your mouthpiece didn't sound like it was hard to play high then. I'm telling you. That's another mouthpiece. That one I just use for tricks and for high notes. Yeah. Okay, you heard it first here online. <laughs> Tell me, um, do you miss playing in the orchestra? Um, sometimes I do when I hear a beautiful orchestra play. Fantastic repertoire. But I've actually accepted to play for five days at the end of October, so I'm going to be doing some work in the London Symphony Orchestra. We're going on tour to New York, and then in December, another short period. So uh, the answer is yes, I do miss it, and that's why I'm going to play a little bit of orchestra in London. Yeah. When is your concert here? You're being serenaded in the background by some jazz musician. And when is your concert here? We have a recital tomorrow at 4.30 uh, Melbourne time. It's going to be a recital program with uh, Kasia uh, Andrzejczyk, a wonderful Polish pianist whom I met here. And also I'll be performing on Friday night uh, with the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra. That's lots of concert to be played. Can someone just get shot? Uh, the so-called number two. I'm sorry? <laughs> Sounded like someone just got shot at the Melbourne Town Hall. We're all very nice in Australia. We don't use guns here. <laughs> um, Radovan, I have someone that wants to say hello to you and someone to say hello to all you guys online too. I have two people that want to say hello to you. Come on in. You're hey. live online. Hi, good to see you. Hey, Radovan, good to see you. Hello. And Jesus, our new boy. We, hi. Hi. So you're away in Australia, wow. I am, I am, hopping along in Australia, yes. <laughs> and, Great time. and you see here, you guys, right in there, there, there are loads of horn players. Oh, hi, all you horn players out there. All around the world, from all horn sorts of countries. All around the world. Horn players unite. I think this is the coolest thing we've tried in a long time. I hope you guys agree. We're about to do a rehearsal of Schumann Konzertstück. You're going to Russia, 
You're spying on the internet, yes. You've been spying on us. Ah. Oh. Well, I was spying on you today, so <laughs> hang on, can you see you guys? Wait, okay. wait, 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 wait. wait. Get we you have out to make sure that our heads are in the future. You gotta get the heads, because he has such a nice head, you have to make sure his head I is in the future. I hope we have some time in the future to play tennis again with Stefan. He's a phenomenal tennis player, among other things. Oh, we should do that again, yeah. <laughs> Andre plays tennis too. Hold on. Top spin. Um, okay. Well, uh, we've got a rehearsal. You guys online. Um, I really wish I could see your questions right now. I'm so sorry. Um, rather, I've asked him the ones I want to know. I will collect all the ones you want to know. Maybe I'll mail them to him and um, and ask him to answer them sometime. <laughs> You'd like that, wouldn't you, Radovan? <laughs> Stefan, you're out the picture. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got to get to the picture. Um, when is your concert again? On Friday? Uh, Friday in the evening. I'm not sure. It's seven or seven. Eight, 8 p.m. 8 p.m. Yeah, 8 p.m. 8 p.m. And where do you go on after Melbourne? All back to the bit of Europe. Yes. On Saturday. When will you come back to Berlin? Berlin. No plans for Berlin right now. <laughs> okay, Stefan, what would you want to ask Radovan Vlatkovic? What would I want to ask him? Uh, how's it going? No, no, well? how's no, the no. family? How's oh, the weather no. there? <laughs> no, no. We've got all these horn players watching online, you know? Uh, what would you have to ask something horny? I mean, I mean, yeah. horn player wise. <laughs> Why did you decide to play the horn of all oh, instruments? Oh. <laughs> well, I was staying in the States. I lived in the States for two years with my parents in the 60s. And my father, who was a scientist, he's a chemist, met a young horn player at the time studying at the University of Wisconsin in Madison, and he became my first teacher. So it was coincidence by chance. It wasn't my choice. It, the horn came to me before I could even think. Well, okay. well it seems to have worked out quite well. <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't complaining. <laughs> and what would you ask the Meister? Of the summer. Oh, that's the that's the yeah. we, just, we just met in Slovenia before the, the short vacation that I had, so I had a lovely time. We went to the Adriatic and we did some sailing with the family. We also did have time to play tennis and do some swimming and diving, so it was a wonderful summer. How was yours? Good. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I've got to tell. I've got to tell our viewers. Andre has just become a father. Great congratulations! A beautiful baby girl, Emma. 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 E M A. She's absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> so these things were important in the horn world too. Um, so Radovan, when you come back from when you come back from these holidays, don't worry, we'll let you go quite soon. But I just wanted to ask, when you come back from these holidays, like sailing in the summer with Andre, how do you get back into shape? Mm -hmm. Slowly, step by step, <laughs> and you don't get impressed when nothing works for the first couple of days. Um, actually, we went sailing with another f friend who was a trumpet player, so uh, uh, we just started practicing together there and very slowly after that. It takes time, it's frustrating, but you just have to expect that nothing's going to work when you come back. And then, How many hours a day do you put yourself through this? Oh, uh, I try to practice in short sessions and, and not, not, not make it too, too difficult. How long are short sessions? Short <laughs> Three. Three minutes. I heard, I heard from Christian Lindbergh that he practices in 24 minute sessions. So that 24 is minutes? 24 minutes at a time and then have a break. <laughs> no, um, I, I try to do an hour maybe, but, but really easy and, and not rushing the routine so that, I, so that it feels good. There will be a moment when it doesn't feel good, but you just have to take it as it comes and get enough rest and gradually get back into it. Do you still like practicing after all these years? I'm not a, a passionate practicer, but uh, I feel good when I've done it, so, so it is worth the effort. And uh, I have to say that I feel less nervous on stage if I did my homework, that's for sure. Yeah. Stefan? I would tend to agree, like, like practicing. I actually enjoy uh, practicing uh, because if I don't practice, then I, I don't feel comfortable when I have to play something. And I, I hate that feeling of going on stage and not being prepared and not having the chops to get through 
whatever I have to play. So I would rather, uh, you know, suffer and practice, you know, basic things, uh, you know, farkets, warm up scales, uh, playing notes until I. You know, feel I'm ready to... We'll get Stefan back online for yeah. all you guys with all the questions. I promise we're going to do some some serious horn sections with my, my dear horn boys. Andre Andre loves to practice, but he's a new boy, so he, he has to practice, right, Andre? Every day, six hours. Yeah, right. Those are the easy days. <laughs> Those are his days <laughs> off. <laughs> well, Radovan, it's such a pleasure to see you. Thank you so, so much for joining us. We were hoping for one last guest to come in and say good morning. I bet you can't guess who that might be. He still might appear. I don't know. Where is he? He's not in the horn room. He's taking Lucky. He's taking Lucky for a walk, I think. That's probably... I uh, mentioned no names, but he's taking Lucky for a walk. You can either hang out with us here till he comes, or uh, Stefan could play you his warm-up. <laughs> I think I have to get going because I have to get my horn into the apartment and there's a concert tonight with the Nazi Brass. What a coincidence. Um, one minute. Oh. <laughs> hello. 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 hello, Stefan. Stefan, here's Radovan and here are the horn, the horn players of this world. Good. On the edge. Everything okay? I'm fine, yeah, yeah. We're having a lovely time here in spring in Australia, and it's very nice here, yeah. Stefan came to the Melbourne Brass Week. He flew to Melbourne. How many days were you there from uh, Stefan? Three days. He, he flew from Berlin for three days to it's Melbourne. Actually, that was months. just on the airplane, three days. I <laughs> <laughs> didn't have time to get into the jet lag. Yeah, yeah, I just oh, stayed on okay. Berlin time. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you guys, it's almost finished. It's almost finished, and we have, we have to rehearse a little bit, I think. Yes, we better. We, we are rehearsing the Schumann Konzertstück for our concert in Moscow. So, you guys, we've got the Hammond Bolsa. So, I will see you in oh, a second. Oh, I'm okay. signing off. Okay. Okay. Radovan, right. thank you so right. much for joining us. Have fun. Don't work too hard. Don't work too hard. No, no, we won't. Have a wonderful concert in Melbourne. On Friday, I, want, I don't know if it's being live streamed. I hope so, but if not, then uh, then I'm sure it'll be a huge success. Okay, thanks very much for the interview. Take care. Thank you for joining us. We really appreciate it. It was a really big honor. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.